talking with Coach Chris Giesman about the 1999 football team, the Kingsman. All right, Coach, let's uh, let's talk about the team. Once again, another great defensive team. Held your opponents to less than three yards per rush throughout the course of the year, and you know, in in total, uh, you look at this one. Started off with a win against Valparaiso, lost to Ben Davis, 14-7. And eventually, uh, I thought it was a pretty interesting game. I remember this one distinctly, an overtime game against Lake Central, if you recall that one, 26-23. But you got back to see in, uh, Coach D and the Ben Davis Giants in the state championship game. So let's talk about the 1999 Penn Kingsman. Okay, the, uh, the first thing, it had, it had a horrible start. We had, there was a... Uh, a big party, and we ended up having to suspend 18 kids. And uh, we suspend them for uh, you know the scrimmage in the first game and all of two days. They could not come to two days. And people say, anybody that's ever played football knows if you miss all the two days, your chances of playing that year are slim and none. Of those 18, we only had two that have played any significant uh, any significant time after that. And the thing was, the thing that made it worse is uh, we had we had rumors going around about who was this, this and that. And I said, look, so one night we had everybody showed up for summer workout, I canceled it. Everybody wait. And I had the kids come in my office one at a time and I asked each one of them, we get to the party. Eighteen said yes. Uh, other parents and everybody said some kids lied that were there and you know how that always goes. I said I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to spend the rest of my time trying to dig it out. I, I, I asked, I said this is it and they're going to be suspended. Well people said missing uh, a, a scrimmage in one game that's a punishment. Well they also missed all two. They did sure. not even show up until uh, I had them to show up uh, the week of our first game so they could be eligible for the right. second game if they but they missed all two days missed everything I mean and I had Mike Rosenthal who was a high school All-American four-year starter at Notre Dame and every year we had to tinker with his stance during two days I mean here's an All-American that as a senior, that you, you need to work on his stance just a little bit. That's just that's, that's just an example. Mike probably would deny that, but okay. it's true. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I mean, kids that aren't high school, they're gonna they're missing a lot, and they're missing new stuff we put in. As I said, the 18 only two ever played any kind of significant minutes at all that year. And 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 it was uh, the, the thing that it uh, yeah it changed everything at Penn. That's when we put on our athletic coat. People were calling superintendent and everybody saying that's this is no penalty. This is well, it was a much more severe penalty. Most schools you miss three games. Ours is much more severe, missing all two days. But you know people don't understand that, so it's a. Uh, but anyway, so now they have, because of what we did, they now have an athletic code book, which most schools have, and uh, where the punishments, they're going to tell you exactly what you're going to get for each violation. And the thing I don't like about that is basically, I mean, you can't make your own decisions about your program. Oh, uh, okay, look at page 38, section two, three games. I mean, it, whatever you do, that it's all cut and dried what you do. And uh, I didn't like it because basically getting drunk and coming to school and uh, wrecking a classroom was under the same category as somebody that had a glass of champagne at his sister's wedding. I mean, oh, they're both drinking. And it's both, you know, it's going to be a suspend. So I, I just uh, the good things about the athletic code is kids know what they're risking. The bad thing is that I mean you can't be a coach anymore. 
I've had, uh, I remember I used to have, I'd hear there was drinking going on. I believed it, but I couldn't prove it. And you don't, you don't act on anything you can't prove. But I would call a kid in with his parents. And I said, let me tell you, first of all, I'm not throwing your son off the team. You gotta know that, but I've heard he's been drinking. I believe it to be true. I cannot prove it. That's why I'm not gonna take any action. I can't prove it. But I'm just telling you as parents, you better keep an eye on it. And if you ever do, he's gonna be gone. But you know, instead of nowadays, they'll dig in, they'll bring the kid in, they'll talk friends in, they'll try to get him. Uh, and, and so, you know, that's uh, what I don't, that's the one thing I don't like. But that came out of our 1999 football season because uh, people thought that, uh, that uh, we were going to, uh, we were too easy on kids. So I remember that and the other thing that really uh, hurt, we got, uh, we had uh, Sean Clucker who was our number two receiver and uh, he, we started using him a lot. He broke, he broke his, uh, he broke his ankle in the Laporte game. And uh, yeah, he's going to be a TV or a documentary star. He didn't know it. Awesome. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, then uh, Zach Hill, he got hurt carrying the ball on a counter in the, uh, the uh, game right before the state finals, which was uh, what, Northrop? Yeah. And he could not raise his arm. He could play, but he, so we basically lost our two top wide receivers and that really, really limited us. And uh, we were just uh, not anywhere near the team, just missing those two real skilled kids. Uh, we, it really uh, hurt our offense. And uh, plus, um, th this is a, this is a pretty good Ben Davis team and had that uh, all world quarterback that ended up starting at Tennessee as a freshman and yep. ended up getting having some problems. But uh, basically, I, I remember the main thing I remember about those seasons is how it started, how it ended. I also uh, remember uh, 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 that Lake Central game. That was. Uh, <laughs> We, uh, we were down in overtime, down by three, and we had a fourth and two and went for it and made it. I remember Jim Lizzie took the ball, he's in the end zone throwing mm -hmm. and punted it clear over the stands. But uh, the other thing was uh, we uh, had like uh, to even tie the game to get to overtime, we had to go the length of the field in about 50 seconds and we did it. And uh, so we did that, and then we got behind in the uh, overtime, and uh, went for it on fourth and two, and made it. So that was that was kind of a uh, that was kind of a uh, uh, a big thing for us too. Despite the fact that the '99 senior class had the struggles with what happened off the, this group ended up going 54 and three, coach. I know it's not too bad for career, is it? <laughs> I mean, think about that. That's yeah. that's as good as you could ever ask for, and you know. Yeah. And uh, Dan Phillips had a great year from a, from his position. Gabe Kovach, Drew Stewart, mm -hmm. Ber uh, Beeman Durfer, Klein. Uh, once again, Jeff Thompson was right in there in the mix too. Uh, talk about the uh, you know the quarterback. Uh, is it Kanselewski? Sensalisky. Sensalisky. Yeah. All right. Numbers were really, really good. Threw for 1,700 yards, 23 touchdowns, six. Uh, and then, of course, Jimmy Lizzie was <laughs> seven yards a carry every time he touched the ball. Those, yeah. guys, those are pretty good numbers, too. Yeah. I remember uh, telling Dan Phillips he moved down. Another fortunate movement. He's 6'5, 250. He could move. And uh, I. <laughs> I remember he went to IU and they redshirted him, and I never forget uh, when IU played Purdue. Dick Delahan called me up from the stadium. He said, "I thought your kid went to IU," and I said, "He did. He's down there." 
I say he's red shirted. He said, well, they ought to be playing him. He's better than one of those guys who got in there now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he, he was uh, he was good. And I, I remember seeing him after the game, after we got beat down there. And uh, I said, Dan, you know, this is, this game is your fault. And he went, what? I said, yeah, if you hadn't moved in, we wouldn't even be here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he, uh, he he was he was pretty good. And uh, Sensolewski, I think, has the most passing yardage because actually he's a two-year starter at the time. And uh, as I said, uh, Jim Lizzie at the time was our leading career rusher. And uh, the thing that's amazing about that the, the quarterbacks and running backs we had, if you even ask the, the, the most uh, involved Penn fans, who's Penn's leading passer career, leading rusher career, I don't think Jason Sutzelewski or Jim Lizzie would get, I wow. think they did look for Jeremy Lowry, Mark Ward, Dan Goodman, so on and so forth, all the way up, you know. Okay. <clears throat>